I'm pretty sure no one likes to be in a bad relationship. And you know you're in a bad relationship when you're constantly arguing and it starts to feel like you're part of a reality show. Now, an unhealthy relationship doesn't mean it's the end of it. Maybe you aren't communicating with your partner as you did before, or maybe there's a lack of respect. Whatever's the case, you know you're in a bad relationship when you're constantly questioning where it's heading towards. You might not want it to end, and yet all you see is the relationship heading towards a brick wall. But before ending that relationship, spend some time alone by either writing, jogging, or even break dancing to shift your mind into a more focused state. And after spending some time alone, ask yourself again if your relationship is worth saving still. Once you make up your mind and you still want to save your relationship, we'll start by staying calm. When you're in a bad relationship, something you notice is the amount of conflicts you get into with your partner. You're arguing about petty little things like who didn't wash the dishes or what to watch on Netflix. So despite what you may want to do, remain calm during the conflict because it increases the chance that your partner will also lower their own defense too. Shouting at your partner is only going to bring more fire into the conversation. So just remain calm during the argument because it will reduce your partner's rage. And whenever people yell at something not reflecting the same type of anger as them, they usually tend to cool themselves down. Not to mention remaining calm prevents you from saying anything mean or rash to your partner. And I know, it's difficult remaining calm when someone's yelling right at you, and you might even want to yell back at them. But resist the temptation to fight back, because once you get past that anger, you'll get a chance to finally address the problem that's troubling you both. If you have trouble remaining calm during an argument, Become more aware of your emotions. If you don't monitor the way your emotions react, they easily shift into autopilot mode and you can automatically become just as angry and do something silly. The next is communicating effectively. Once your partner cools down, this will be the time to speak to them like a normal human being. Don't give your partner the assumption you don't care about what they have to say by overriding their words with your own opinions. Know when to speak at the right moment and when to listen and use a good degree of eye contact to show you're trying to make things better. When given a chance to speak, do so in a calming manner so they understand what you're feeling. Peacefully focus on the problem your relationship is facing and limit your complaints and criticism. And when you feel your anger about to get the best of you, think of the positive moments you had in the relationship and remind yourself why you're fighting to keep it alive. Maybe your partner doesn't feel like they're receiving the same type of affection they did in the past. Or maybe your partner is depressed about their current job situation and they're taking it out by doing reckless things. By focusing on a particular behavior your partner may be suffering from, it brings you both closer to fixing it. Most relationships fail because they ignore the main problems bothering them both. So focus on how to fix your main behavior flaws to make it easier to communicate with your partner. But remember that effective listening isn't always easy. It involves more than just keeping your mouth shut and listening to your partner's complaints. You have to show empathy and see the situation in their own point of view. You don't have to agree with what they have to say or excuse their actions, but demonstrate that you do understand them. And the next is validating their feelings. Despite what abusive words your partner may say to you, the one thing they are searching for is just for you to understand their feelings. They want you to understand what they're going through emotionally and they want their opinions to be respected. Validating the feelings is perhaps the most effective technique on this list because you're acknowledging their values and recognizing their pain. Even if you disagree with their thoughts and beliefs 100%, at least show validation to resolve the conflict and arrive to a conclusion. Show your partner that you understand them so they don't take anything you say as a sign of sarcasm. If you did something that hurt your partner's feeling, take responsibility by admitting it to them. Don't just apologize. Apologizing is often just a weak substitute for bad behavior. We often give apologies if the problem can easily be fixed or if it's an innocent mistake. But when you have an issue that can break the relationship, give the reason why you're apologizing. When both partners take responsibilities for their actions, it makes the process easier to fix. Or else, you'll continue arguing about the small problems that didn't even exist until the argument happened. So how do we fix a broken relationship? After using all three techniques, this will be the time to finally fix a broken relationship by discussing what the main problem is in it. But if you and your partner still can't reach a good conclusion, take a break by spending some time apart. Spend a few hours alone while recollecting your thoughts and calming down. And once you and your partner's anger lowers, approach the issue again in a calmer manner. 
One of the main things you need to always remember is that you can't expect your partner to do everything the way you want, and you have to learn how to tolerate their behavior. Such as how they accept you for your flaws, you have to accept them for theirs too. No one's perfect, and if you want to save your relationship, you have to remind yourself that very important fact every day. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more videos in the future, just hit that like button and subscribe.